when you sign up to tactical pad okay uh, if you haven't done already the first thing you'll see is um what sport um i usually advise people to select um football uh, or soccer whichever one comes up okay so you go in and this will come up this pitch here the the, the soccer pitch okay and the question i got asked the most was where's the ga pitch what 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 template can you use so what you do is come down here along the bottom and select field and you go to field and you'll have a number of pitches here a number of football pitches uh pitches uh, divided up into different sections which are very useful as well um up here is a this one you can actually take a photo of any pitch you like and use it but i would recommend you scroll over here and beside this blue tennis court is the ga pitch okay select okay and there we have it full size ga pitch ready to go okay you can select the half pitch as well so if you come down here i would use this i would use this a good bit just one half the pitch here's the other but we'll start with the with the full pitch okay so we start off so i'm going to start off just using a, a, a a backs and forwards approach. I'll go into the logic of backs and forwards later on. Um, I should say before I start, what I'm going to talk about as well is some um, uh, session session design, um, maybe the logic behind my games uh, and my match situations. And then um, if we have time, we'll answer some questions uh, at the end. So starting off with two our two teams here. Okay. Here we have it numbered one to into into, into the, the mid twenties. Okay, you can change them around here. So what I go, what I do is I just go for a very simple approach: red and blue. So you go into store teams. Okay, I have them here already. Okay, so you just you can change the color whatever you want. So if you want if you want your your tip or your clear colors or your Dublin colors, here they are. Okay, so I have them stored. So because it's blue, load, and then this team here, store, red, load, okay, and we're ready to go. Okay, so I usually go blue backs and red forwards. So we put the keeper in goals. Okay, and you can also change the, the jersey of the keeper. You see just uh, in here use different appearance for for the goalie and you can just change it up here so we'll go maybe white here and there keepers jerseys changed we put in a, a full back line so just drag the players over here onto your screen So I'm obviously using my laptop, but if anyone is using um, an iPad, it, it's just as much, just as user friendly. Um, I use um, I've only just started using the laptop, um, but I did find the iPad really useful as well, using an iPad pen as well. Okay, so there's our full back line. Uh, we come over here to the reds. We have a full forward line. Again, we just scroll over. 14, 15, we put in some midfielders here. Your form, so if you're a football coach, soccer coach, there's your formations there, whatever you want to play. Uh, midfielders. And sure, we'll put in a centre back and a centre forward on the, this uh, end here. Okay. So they're the pairs I'm going to use. Okay, for footballs and stuff like that, you press tools, items. Okay, I usually use the smallest ball because uh, I do a lot of my stuff through hurling, but we'll just go with the mid sized ball here just so we can all see it. Okay, so what you can do down here, so let's just say we go with an image first. 
So we're moving here. We want the ball passed in here. So we just get a line. So whatever kind of line you want, straight line, arrow in here. Okay. We want 14 to make a run. So we can go, let's use a broken line for the run like that. These are running like that. Okay. And the put another ball here. And so on. Now that's a nice looking image there. But the beauty of Tactical Pad, okay, is its animation. Okay, so if you want to delete anything using Tactical Pad, here are your erasers here. So you can just delete your line here. Or if you want to delete everything at once, delete all the ink from the board, and there you have it. Okay, I'm going to just get rid of this football here. So, if you want to animate your session, I'm going to animate now the, the backs and forwards um, scenario I'm going to do here. So you go down to animation. Do you wish to convert an animation board? Yes. I'm ready. So the most important button here is underneath the, the delete button. This is the frame button. And this is really important. So every time you want to pass the ball, you must press this button. So what we're going to do is not red's going to start frame. We go pass All right. in here. And then 15 will run, four will follow. Okay. Always remember frame, get into the habit of using the frame. We have lads making runs here. Okay, 13 can come in. Frame, we have a pass across, okay. Okay, and then nine can make a run. Okay, I'll animate this now in a second. Frame, pass. And you can have track and back, wherever you want. Nine moving in. And then frame and score. All right, poor goalkeeping there. This one here. Okay, it's just, this is pass on the ground, and this is pass in the air. So, there's eight frames there, okay? Let's see how that goes. So we'll press the play button. There's the pass like that. There's the run. There's a cross field pass. I'm just having it really slow now just to illustrate it. Ball inside. And score. So we'll do that again. Your speed is down here, and this is important as well. Okay, I've seen a few coaches using this where the speed is, is, is bananas, or really, really slow. So let's try out a couple. So we go with two. There we go, it's a bit quicker. There we go, score. Okay. Now. We'll just go back to the start here. So nine for midfield, 14 in. Okay. There we go. Frame, ball is out, and we're ready to go again. So if you want to um, describe using text boxes or stuff like that, okay? Come down here, back to edit. So it won't, it won't do anything here. Put text box up here. Okay, writing, and we just call this so. Box and forwards. Okay, and you can just move that wherever you like. Pitch. Okay, we put another text box here to describe what's going on.
So what we want is forwards changing direction. Okay, so we go forwards change. direction okay and then we'll highlight some players so we come down here again so you have circles squares change colors so we just change color so here we go yellow we want a circle around 15 so it's a bit too big you know raise that okay so we get rid of the broken line so we put a circle here We put a circle here. Arrows. Simple stuff uh, like that. Make sure your text, uh, try, try and limit the amount of text you have uh, on the screen. Okay, it just takes away from the aesthetic uh, value of, of, of tactical pad, in, in, in my opinion. Okay, and what you can do then. Okay, is go back to animation. Just press the frame button a few times so you get to see these. Okay, and we go again. A picks the ball up. This time we go straight. Just nine picks the ball up. So we go straight to full forward. He closes down. The boys here are making their runs. Backs are confused. And then we can go nine coming in. Frame, always use the frame button. Get used to that. Okay. There we go. Okay. If we don't use the frame button, so we'll just go back. What happens is, so we'll just delete all these. So if anyone knows of a, a faster way of deleting all these, we'll just go to a new project, let me know. The best way to figure out tactical pad is um, tuning in tonight will help you, I hope, but playing around, around with it yourself is key. Messing with it, using different uh, type of pitches, but just, um, Trying things out for yourself. All right. So, what happens then if you don't press that this frame button here? So we press press it here first for the pass. That's fine. What happens then is fifteen here, fourteen comes out. We want the cross field ball. I haven't pressed the frame button. Thirteen. Nine makes the run. I haven't pressed the frame button, I'm using the pass. Then I press frame and ball passed in. Okay, so what happens if, because I didn't press frame those few times. There you go. And I totally missed out the, all the passing around here because I didn't press frame. Okay, and that's key. Right, keep pressing your animation button. So if you do eight or nine frames or one move, press play to see how it goes, see what the speed is like, okay? And then you can go again, okay? So we'll come out of that down here. So what you can do, if you wanna save that, so you go to save as. You just save it here, okay? And then we have a new project. Do you want to see? No. And we'll open a new project again. Okay. Field. This time we're going to go with the half pitch. Oh, uh, well, GA, GA field. That's why we're here. Now, half pitch. So, small sided games. Tackle pad is brilliant for um, animation of small sided games. Okay, so I'm gonna go a few a few tips first for um, the using the, the software for it. So tools, 
square. Okay. So what we want here, so we get our box here. This is going to be our area. Okay. Nice small little area there. Okay. Now you can leave the box there and put your players in. Or what you can do, like us as coaches, how would we how would we um, put together our area like that? We'd use our cones. So in here to items, we go with the yellow cones, slide it across. Okay. And again, they're quite small. So we just click on it here. And we've increased the size. So we go one, two, three, four, five, like that. And you can see it a bit bigger there. Now, instead of going in um, and dragging them all across, taking forever, you can duplicate them like that. Okay. Like this. So we duplicate a couple more. One, two, three. There we go. One here. Here. the idea. I hope your cone placement is a bit more neater than mine. This and the reason I'm doing this, I'll just show you in a second. Just being a bit more realistic. Okay, so what if, if you're just placing cones out here, we say, you know, you want and put them on a line, which tend to be tends to be a bit a bit crooked. Okay, for me anyway it is. Uh, maybe your geometry is better than mine. So the best thing to do here then is get rid of the line. So we'll delete the line. And there you have um, almost a nice square of yellow cones. Okay, we'll move this one just down here. Now, so let's go um, do a 4v4 in here. Select your team. We just go with the what's there. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then we go with the two. Four. Our ball here. So into tools. Ball in here. Okay. And again, we go over this. This is important. Frame button. So we just set up a small side of game going on here. And uh, we put actually two. Uh, this is a game called Outside Man. So we have four before here. What we do here, we put two outside players or neutral players, so it doesn't matter what color they are. All right, we want them to be neutral, so let's bid them up. So let's click on number five here. So the neutral players with both sides go to bib here. Let's put yellow bibs on them, like that. Okay, and then this guy here, bib, like that. Okay. If you want, make a note of it yourself. So notes here, right? So yellow equals neutral there. Okay, that's just for your own notes there. So we're in the animation board. Let's start off again. Reds will have it. Frame, and you have your players, boys and girls moving around here. Frame button, pass. You can get your players moving around, all around the square, making runs. The idea behind, small side of games. Pressure on, let's use the neutral player. Okay, and in this instance, okay, this guy here must pass the ball back to the team that gave them the ball. So again, 
just all in support here. Okay. So, and that continues on. Let's make a run, frame. So let's see how that played out in our animation. Again, nice, so pretty slow. Okay, let's increase the speed. Let's go to four. All right. Okay, and there you go. Small side of the game. Okay, I always like to have progressions. Okay, and I'll be talking about um, maybe session design and the logic behind these games uh, as we go on. So I like to put a progression into these kind of games, especially scoring ones. Okay, so let's put um, keeper in here, one here. And what I like to do then is, let's just say after two, so and the other so if you want to save it save it the animation button is always in tools here like that okay so let's say after three passes you can go for a score so let's go one two three What I like to do then is everybody attacks. So let's go. Down we go. Long ball, longish ball in front of the player. And we go. Frame and score. And there we have it. So let's press animation. We stick with four to speed it up. So always press animation because you might have missed something. You might have uh, might have been a mistake. There we go. Okay, so again, if you want to save it, okay, if you want to upload it, all right, so we're going to share, okay, you can select it as an image. So it would just be this image here for your files, or you can share it as a video uh, as well. Okay, and you could um, put it into whatever folder you have. I have a big folder of games based stuff and just transfer it across. It's, it's quite easy. Okay, I'm gonna go, so new project, no. So I hope everybody uh, can hear me and it's going okay. If not, uh, just someone shout out there. Uh, field, R pitch, GA pitch. All right, so here we have the effects, okay, and connectors. This is a really, really cool um, part of Tactical Pad. So I'm just going to demonstrate it uh, in a very basically basic first, and then I'm going to put up a game that I, uh, I, I designed using the, the connectors. So we go with our cones. So. Here, uh, yeah, I'm actually no. We go, we go here instead. So select our team. We need our cones for this. We go one, two, three, four. So moving players all around the pitch of this can be a bit tedious sometimes. Okay. What you'd like to see them doing is, is working or moving in, in at the same time or in unison. So what we do, we want to connect them up. So come into your tools, effects, connectors, we're going to add. So we've blue team here. So we connect all the blue players up. Move them over. 
press OK. Yep, there they are connected. We have the ball here with the reds. All right. Animation, yes. Frame. So as, as the reds are passing the ball around, So we want these these guys kind of hunted in packs. So we're going to move to pick someone up all at once, like that. Okay, and we'll just do another pass here, moving at once. Goes down our position. Pass. All right, so there's six frames. So let's watch it on the, the animation, okay? See the players moving moving together. Now, it's not, it doesn't look that pretty because you can see the blue lines. Not to worry, we're gonna increase the speed. Okay, go back into edit, effects, connectors, just delete the there, they're still connected as you'll see now. Okay, so we go back to animation, press play again, and you can see the pairs moving together. And especially for possession games, it makes it a life a lot easier and um, it looks an awful lot better as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is open up a game that I've already made. So this is a game called Hunting Packs. So I'm gonna play the game for you first. I'll explain it first. So the idea is we have 8v8 here. Okay, so if you can see my little red button here, if not, I'll use the cursor, I'll use the cursor. Possession game again. So players numbered one to eight. Reds have the ball and reds are keeping away from the blues. The blues are partnered up. Okay, and the idea of the game is that they hunt in packs and there's, a little, there's really it's communication you need here. Okay, so let's play it. Let's see, we go uh, to speed there. Okay, so as you can see, the blues have to stay together while they're closing down the opposition, and Reds must keep the ball away. Again, here's the descriptions here. Blues turn over, so we'll pause it there. So what happens then, if there's a turnover, the Blues must spread right out around the field, they have to keep possession, and Reds must partner up as quick as you can. Okay, and in designing this game, what I've done is, I've connected all the Blues when they're partners, so I connected one to two, or, and, and the same with the reds, I connected three to four, five to six, seven to eight, they're partners, okay? And these are all spread out, okay? So when I'm designing a game, oh, let's play. Everyone partners up. And that's the game. So when I, when I am designing a game, I like to think of match situations um, as opposed to just having a possession game where eight keep it away from eight, stuff like that, which is fine. So imagine um, you know, you're, try you're trying to instill work rate into your team. Okay, imagine the, I, had, I had a chat with one of the, the backroom staff uh, of the, the Kerry uh, senior football team uh, last week, and we were just talking about um, improving your coaching and stuff like that. And I'd say, get your, get your players, or in his case, his students, uh, his coaching students, to imagine match scenarios. So what I did here, if you think back to last year's All-Ireland football final, where Dublin's 5 and all was on the line, Kerry looked like they were going to win, and Dublin's hunting in packs for the last five, five or ten minutes was, was sensational, and it saved their five in a row. And I just said, how can we coach that? Or can you coach that? 
similar in, in Hurling, if you think back to the 2014 uh, All Ireland Hurling final, there's a famous uh, segment of play where it was just insane work rate by Kenny hooking and blocking and resulted in a score and it probably changed the match. They had that score, but the work rate was, was incredible and they were hunting in packs. And it's a big part of our game now. So th that's what this, uh, this game was about. I'm going to play one more time, maybe at a faster pace. All right? But the game was designed using the connectors quite a lot. Okay. There you go. So just the pace is a bit more there. Turnover ball. Now the blues have to be, the reds have to partner up straight away and blue spread out. Okay. So, so take that game away and put your own uh, spinner, put your own stamp on that game. New project. Field. G pitch. So now we're going to do some um, so lines of running. Okay, so I'm going to, again, I'll have a game in a while for you. I'm just going to do some very basic stuff here. So this is where we need the cones. Go, click on that. One, two, five. Then we duplicate that. Okay. Different gates here. Very similar stuff. If you want different color gates, just highlight it here like this. Put these yellow. Okay. okay. So you'll figure out all these. If you just start using it, it's like anything, any piece of technology. When you start messing around with it, you'll figure out how to, how to, how to do it. Okay. Okay. So uh, we need a player, one here. So what I want the player to do, let's call this some uh, a shooting drill, maybe, is what I want the player to do is sprint through three gates, get on the ball, stick it over the bar, all right? And so we go into animation. Instead of uh, going frame here, frame, you know, you have to keep going like this, frame, okay? Again, can be quite tedious at times, maybe frustrating. So a good trick is to It. Select this line here, this squiggly line here, okay, and go. So we go blue, yellow, red, okay, blue, yellow, red to the ball, okay. There we go. Then just continue on with your animation. Frame, get on the ball. Frame, let's move with the ball a little bit. Let's push it forward a little bit. Let's move him there. Frame, push it forward a little bit so like he's running with the ball. Frame, and then stick it over the bar, like so. Okay, so let's just press play again. There is off. Carrying the ball over the bar. Simple. Okay. Let's go with a higher speed. Bit too fast, as you can see. Okay. And I've seen some people using tactical, some coaches using tactical pad where it's just really, really fast and it just takes away from what you're trying to explain. So explain to your to, 
to whoever you're showing it to. So much slower speeds here. Two is probably the best one. This comes in really handy then. Okay, so we'll open up. And, and now that we're going back uh, coaching, hopefully soon, uh, with social distancing and non-contact training possibly, here's a good exercise that you could, you could use. So, no, don't want to do that. Right, so we're going to press play here. Don't mind all, all, all this, because as soon as you press play, it'll be okay. So we've got one team out here and one team behind the goals. And we go at one just to see, to, we go actually even slower, just so we can, can explain what's going on. So each player has to run through three gates. You can go in that order, blue, yellow, red, or you can go any three. And I've highlighted number one here. Run through three gates. Take the ball over the bar. Boys behind the goal, girls behind the goal. Get it back out. Oh, this is really so. I've highlighted one. I'll show you how to do that. You get the picture. Okay, so we go at a higher pace. Running through the cones. Pick up your ball, stick it over the bar. Get it back out, partner hits it back out. Okay, two, some new gates. There we go, over the bar. Okay, and it's just, it's a good shooting exercise. Um, it might, it might be any pressure on them, but it's still, um, I would describe this as game based because you're moving in different directions. You're collecting the ball from different areas, but more importantly, you're running in different directions and you're scoring. Okay, and whatever drill, whatever game you do, always try to have an, an element of scoring it, um, in it. Okay. To use the highlighter there, again, what you do, so I'm, I'm just going to highlight uh, another player. Okay, into your effects, highlight, select the player you want to highlight. So we go with player three. And there's three highlighter right there. Okay. Okay. So we open up another project. Again, I'll just I'll just use the soccer pitch here. Again, you can use poles as well. Okay. Tools, items. Use your poles, bring them out here. Okay. Click on the pole. One, two, three, four, five. Duplicate. Okay. So there's one goal. Second goal. And you can have your four goals game. Again, you want to change color. Click on it. Blue. There you go. All right. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is backs and forwards. I'll explain to you now in a second. I'm just going to open up a new um, a new open project. So so as a player. Again, always think of the always think of the sport as you're coaching, right? So this is um, I coach mostly hurling. Same for football. Imagine match scenarios. Okay, what will the, the players when you're designing your session? What will your players experience? Okay, on the Saturday or Sunday okay, when you're designing your sessions. As a player, I always hated backs and forwards, the traditional approach. Hated it. Um, all those years I was living in Dublin, I was playing for Fingalians and Swords. And we would rarely, as like, as like most clubs, we would rarely have 30 players for a full match. Okay, and especially we're a dual club, especially during football week. Okay, and as, as is tradition with lots of clubs and lots of teams, you'd finish, you know, we want to finish with a game and you'd finish with a good old game of, uh, of backs and forwards. 
And so we'd line out, okay, we'd line out with, you know, our full forward line, six back, six forwards, two midfielders, maybe if, if we had the numbers. And out here, then you'd have the coach or maybe an injured player, and they'd be striking the ball in. Okay, so me, the corner forward, let's just say be in here, inside the corner here. Coach would strike the ball in, and I'd get the ball, and I'd stick it over the bar, or I'd stick it in the net, put it wide, or the defender would win the ball and clear it. But I knew then, once I had scored, my job was done for a few minutes. And, you, and let's face it, players took it handy. All right, You knew that for the next three or four minutes, you weren't going to see the ball. Your job was done and you were relaxed. Okay, That doesn't happen in a game. You might not see the ball for 10 minutes, or you might see it 30 seconds later. Okay, And my, my feelings on that traditional backs and forwards approach is that it's totally flawed. And that is not representative of the game of hurling or football that we play. Right. So when I started um, coaching, particularly game space coaching, um, I said I'd never adopt this approach. Okay. So this is my idea of an example of a realistic approach to backs and forwards. So here we have we have um, whatever seven or eight whatever out here. Yeah. In the boxes we have neutral players. Okay, and their job is to support the backs or the forwards, whoever is in possession of the ball. All right, they can only pass back to whoever gave them the ball, and once they use the ball, they must swap with another neutral player. Okay, and I'll just play it out now just to show you. Okay, go to speed. As you see, the, there's the neutral player swapping, score. Okay. So what happened next? What used to happen, the ball then was played out here. Coach would start again and not hit it to the, the corner forward if he got it the first time. So we start with the keeper. We go short puck out. Okay. Let's play it on. Okay. Forwards have to try and turn over the ball, put them under pressure. Okay. And there's the swap. All right. It's important in backs and forwards that the backs, the defenders have motivation as well. Okay. If they're just there as stoppers, it takes the fun out of it. So, for example, I would imagine that, that this is full pitch and down in the way up here, maybe in the 45 or the 21, you've got two gates. Or, some, or, or maybe another coach, and the back score, it's, it's important that they have um, an intent to score as well. They score by striking the ball between two gates or to someone on, on the opposite 21. All right? I used to hate, I used to hate the, the fact that defenders just, their job is just to get the ball and, and, and launch it. And it, was, it wasn't realistic to the game. It might go back to the 2016 All-Ireland Hurling Final, um, Bubbles Duarte's first goal or the tip's first goal Cahill Barrett came out with a ball okay and Cahill Barrett is a very abrasive and inspirational player you know a bit like Porrick Maher when Porrick Maher makes a clearance it's nearly like the score even go back to the great clear team when Lohan cleared the ball it was like a score the big cheer but that, that, that day is gone and Cahill Barrett came out with the ball get a beautiful wristy pass into the corner in front of Bubbles and he stuck it in the net Okay, but how do we coach that? By well, situations like this, where the backs are encouraged to look up, pass, and we do this by using the neutral players, and they strike to someone in the opposition half. Okay, so let's just play it on. And it's important then that forwards have to defend as well, try and turn over the ball, put them in those situations. There's a swap, okay. Bit more realistic. Okay. Back score by clearing to the ball to the opposite 45. Okay. These neutral players can't be tackled and they certainly can't be tackled when they're changing zones. Okay. And make sure you change around the neutral players as well. Okay. 
So we're almost there, almost finished. So I'm just going to go through some other uh, features. Um, project. Okay. So some other features that you, we can use are um, so the boxes here. So this is the kind of thing I would use for playing games like No Man's Land. So we set up a box uh, here. Okay, no, we go we go to half pitch actually. Um, here. Illustrate it better. We go at this end now. Okay, so text box. Color blue. Big game in No Man's Land. Another one here. And then we'll have a different color box in the middle for No Man's Land, we'll do that in yellow. And we'll put this little shady thing here. Sorry, delete that. Square. Like so, and this is no man's land here, and you can put a text box in there like this. Okay, so we go no man's land, and you can make the text bigger or smaller. So we go one, two, three, nice and big. No man's land, just like that. And we maybe one here like that. There we go. Okay. Um, there's also different type of goals. You've got those witches hat cones. So here, let's go different type of goals you can use. Um, if you follow um, Joe Coulter from G Sports Science, um, he has a kind of a circuit um, up on Twitter at the moment. It's fantastic, and he's using a lot of these features as well. Okay, he's, he's definitely worth a follow. Just those kind of goals there. Um, I'm going to go. Actually, just going to go through one more um, match-based scenario. Uh, no, don't see that. Okay, uh, new project. So if you're lucky enough to have, you know, a full thirty of training. We can play a game like this. So I've used the broken lines here. So the idea of this game is that, so we've got 12v12. 12 12. Okay, every player has to start inside 45. So if, let's say we've got about 24, 25 at training, right? Two keepers. Okay, you can either make this pitch smaller like this, or you can use this. You want to encourage wide play, hitting the ball into the corners. The idea of the game is that when a forward receives the ball in here, he can't be touched. He can only be shadowed. Okay, so it just affords the forward an extra second or two to look up, okay, and get the ball in. But once you're in play here, it's, 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 it's anyone's game. So we'll just press play. Oh. Like so. Twelve can't be touched, so it just get, affords the player the opportunity to look up when we get it and get a score. All right, reset again. Always reset inside the the forty fives. Go long. All right. And you do this for maybe five or ten minutes. Again, allowing the forward the opportunity just to look up here and when we go in when we go into our full game then where it's all in you know you're just you're just coaching your players you're finding coachable moments where you could stop the play and ask 11 here you know if he did not if he didn't give the right ball 
you know, what other ball could he have done or what could we do in this situation? Okay, just another way of coaching your players. Okay, so I will leave it at that, everybody. So I'm just gonna come out. Okay, so um, is there any questions? Okay, so okay, so I will leave it at that. Um, thanks everybody for listening. Um, if you have any feedback on it, can you uh, send me, uh, give me an email or a text or all my details are on my, my Twitter page. Um, just to recap, the frame button. Always remember the frame button, okay? Mess around with yourself, okay? The key to this is, is trying things out for yourself. If we, want, if we want as coaches to develop creative players, we as coaches have to be creative as well. We have to try things, okay? Keep your texts to minimum. I've seen some coaches use where half the screen is taken up with text. Keep it, keep it to a minimum, okay? They're, they're just guides to, uh, you're not doing a PowerPoint presentation. It's just a guide for, for the person uh, using it. It takes away from the value of the animation itself if it's just all text. Um, keep the text small as well. And um, look, thanks everybody and um, uh, like I said, any questions, feel free to ask uh, in the future. So take care and stay safe and we'll see you all soon.